So we had the listing page done, okay? Um, I would love the video later. But essentially in this page, we're just getting all the records from uh, the Superbase database and we're listing them in a page. For every element, we have a link to the details page of that particular person, okay? Now, we should be able also to add, right, more person to this list. And for that, we are going to use a different type of page. We are now going to create a form page, right? A create page. Most of your applications also have a create page. And for that page, <coughs> we will need two things. First, we need to create a button here to add a new um, people or person. So, here. Well, it's actually a link to the slash people slash create, right? That was the name that I. Make it a little bit nicer. Okay. So we have this button now. And when we click this button, we're going to be sent to that people create. Oh, interesting. Because people create matches people ID. So I'm going to the to the same page. You see what I'm going? <laughs> yeah, there is a page called people slash ID that, that is basically the details page, right? I think the way to solve this is to create the create page over here. So outside the ID. Inside the ID. Create person page. Yeah. Okay. So you do people and some ID. It will get to that. Person, uh, person details page, but if you do people slash create, you will go to the create form page. Okay? Oh. Yeah, you can. Oh, you mean a model in the same yeah. uh, person's page? Yeah. In the same listing page? That's another alternative, but I think it depends on you how to how you want to manage it. But at the end, whatever I'm going to put in this page, you can put it in a model, and it will be the same, right? What I want you to see is how to create that form and how to submit the data to Superbase. That's the part that I'm getting uh, now. That's a valid UI approach as well. I think for for smaller things it makes sense, or things that are related. For bigger things, then it makes sense to have it in a single page, right? It depends on what are your your app and how that app works. I think a model, for example, if you have like like the calendar, and you want to just add an event, it makes sense to have it in a model, right? Yeah, it depends on the. But the same concept applies, right? You will have a form, and that form will submit the data to Supervise. Okay, so we need to create this uh, form. Now, if you remember the class that we have about forms, we use a library called React Hook Form. Let me React Hook Form. This is the library that we use to create forms. The same way we use React Query to query data, uh, to manage the querying of data, we use React Hook Form to manage for creating forms, right? We have a full class about this. It's in a video. 
but we will use it here. Now, the way we use Yahoo 4 is, first of all, we need to have it installed. It's a dependency. We need to have it in our project. So let me check if I have React Hook 4 already installed. So React Hook 4 is already here. So we don't need to install it. If you need to install it, npm install dash dash save React Hook 4. Okay. Now, because it's already installed and I, I don't need to do anything here, and I would just go to whatever my form, my form page is, and I can create the form here. Now, to create a form, I can say form equals use form. Now, use form also have a set of properties that can uh, that can allow me to manage this form. One of these properties is default values. So these are basically the initial values that my form will have, right? So I can have here, for example, the name will be empty string. The DOB will be an empty string as well. Uh, what else do we have? Email. Address. Form picture what else country 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 idea will leave it as null because I don't know yet what country will be uh, that's not all I think I'm missing one what else well let's let's use that Okay, so default values is one of the yeah. properties that we use uh, that can we that we can use. So basically, initial values for the form. Uh, on the date. What? Date. Is that a date? date of birth. Yeah. Stob. Oh. Oh. Actually, I will put a. This is today's day. DOB is not date of birth, it's date of creation? No, it's date of birth. Oh. <coughs> okay. Now, the second property that we most of the time use is resolver. Now, resolver is a, is a particular function that my form will use to validate that the form is correct. Okay? And for the resolver, we can use the salt resolver. <laughs> And I don't have any stuff. Interesting. So package. And I don't have any stuff. Okay. So we need to install sod and install npm install dash dash save sod. So sod. It's a small package. It's really powerful, but because it's a package that allows you to make data schemas, schemas, so, so basically how some particular data will look like, so we can use it to validate the data that we have in the forms, right? So how this sort, this sort, sorry, is used. <coughs> sorry, <coughs> sorry, <coughs> sorry. So we need to create. A schema and I will support it I will call it person schema and that will be a CETA object of course I we need to import CETA from salt Now, you can read the sub documentation. I will basically use some of the schemas uh, types that, that I used before. So for example, for the name, I'm going to say, OK, this is a string. And the minimum is 1. Name is required. So that means that if I have a name, I have to put at least one letter 
Otherwise, it will be an error, and the error will be the name is required, right? The same for the date of birth. Date of birth is a date, and I can even refine it in a way that I can set the minimum age here, right? <coughs> I would not do that here, so I would just move on. So what else do we have? Email, set a string, and I think we have an email. To, to match the email format, so it's not an email, then you complain. Uh, what else do we have? We have the address. Uh, I think you can pass it here. Yeah. So the address. Uh, phone. I'm not sure about phone, so I will use the same as address. Yeah, that's it. So I will not go into those details. Uh, what else do we have? Oh, the country. Actually, it's an ID and the picture. It's also an ID. <coughs> so this is making everything required. Uh, except for country and picture. So you're leaving it blank. Just sorry. You're leaving it blank for what? Technically, it should be dot optional. So it's actually optional. We can make it mandatory later, but for now we want to leave it optional. So this is the schema for the for the person, and I can use this schema in my form. On the resolver, I can say salt resolver. And pass the schema. So person schema. I think I'm missing the resolver. Oh, the independency for the resolver. I don't remember what this all resolver. Uh, so we need to figure it out. So resolver, hook form. Oh, this is the port. Okay. What? Now you do it five minutes when it takes us like a day to I've seen this before. <coughs> no, no. <coughs> sorry, sorry. It's just that I did this before, so I know that I need this resolver import. No, it's great. It's great. And I know somewhere it should be listed, so I went for that, right? But yeah, the resolver is just a function that takes the schema and takes the data that you get from the, imp from the form and matches that, and if something is wrong, it will tell you, hey, it will execute the schema, right? That's the resolver. And it has to be the sub resolver because we are doing a sub schema. In React Hook 4, you have multiple ways to create schemas. There is job, there is sub, there is a bunch of other wheel libraries. Now, the most common and the most used one is sub, right? Particularly because have TypeScript, uh, you can check it on TypeScript. It has TypeScript uh, output, so you can create the schema and then you can take, create the type based on the on the schema. And because of that, a lot of people use SOD. And then you have the resolver, and it's pretty, uh, it's pretty good, right, for big forms. So basically, just the mapping from create what these different values are. 
So far, I have I know have a four. So if I go to that page, I still have. I still have. And not resolve what self resolve. Ooh, this is wrong. What happened? Uh. Oh, this I'm missing. Okay, so now we can do npm install data save book for resolvers. Okay, so here, <laughs> my page, no, no, it's fine, it's fine. So my page is still don't have a form, actually, right? I just have the hook that will create the form, that will allow me to create the form and validate the form, but I still don't have the inputs, okay? So now for the inputs, <coughs> I will put them here. Create person, and then I will create the inputs here. Okay, so the input for the uh, for the name. Now, using using the documentation for React Hook form, you will see that the way you connect every field is by using this register. From the form, from the use form, I can get register function, and I can use register in a property of an input. So I will do that. I will go to the input and I will say dot 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 form dot register. And what is the camp the what is the field that I want to register? The name. So now in my form I have a name. Of course it doesn't have a label or anything, so let me add a label here. Name. If I want to make it pretty, I can use Form label from Bootstrap 5 that I already have installed. And form control. So now my form will look like this, right? <coughs> <coughs> Sorry. Uh, if I want to make this a little bit nicer, I can wrap this in a container. So it'll be like this. So this is the name. And I need the rest of them, right? Name. This will be email. Phone. Address. So, oh, sorry, what? Place yeah, yeah, I can use the placeholder. Um, be careful with the placeholder, though. Some people think. Wow, it's like out. <laughs> yeah, because it's, the types are yeah. The browser are smart enough to identify what you want to put there. Um, so what I'm saying, be careful with the placeholder, is because some people, depending on how the placeholder is designed, some people think. That is actually data that's pre-filled, and they can get confused by that, right? So you have a placeholder that says any something, and and it's even if it's lighter, they will think, oh, it's so many here. I think people say, oh, there's so many here that is already pre-filled. It's like, what any? <laughs> and it's the placeholder, just telling them that that should be the name, right? So be careful with placeholders, especially if they are bad design. Have bad design. Cool. So we have this. <coughs> sorry, we have these uh, inputs. Of course, we're missing country and picture. We will, I will work on around those in a minute. And country, yeah, country and picture. Those that we're missing. 
and at the end I will add a button type submit uh, create person or save data save person ah, save person doesn't do add person yeah I'm not saving anybody so <laughs> last name btn btn success okay so now it's a button Okay. <coughs> so you fill the data and you and you basically hit the add button, everything gets submitted. Okay. Now, a couple of things that we're missing here. First, we need to wrap our forms with the form tag, including the button. Okay? So when we are clicking on the button, it's actually something that will happen because remember when you have a form when you have a form and you have a button of type submit inside the form, if you click the button, it will submit that form, okay? So right now, if I put some data here and I hit submit, you see that something happens, okay? Now, that what happened is that all the data was encoded in the URL and going back to the same page, that's not optimal because it's not validating, it's not doing anything. We have to change that. So the first thing that we're going to do here is in the form, there is a unsubmit event. And in that unsubmit event, we're going to call form handle submit. And we have to pass a function that will be executed when the form is successful. So when the form, you have all the data you, that you need. And there is no validation errors and you hit submit, that function will be called with all the data, okay? So I will call this function handle save data. And I will create this function right here. So const handle save data, and of course this, this function gets called with the data. So I will basically console log that data, just that. Right? I'm not doing actually anything with the, with the data. I'm just printing that data in the console. So that means that in the console, if I put something here, well, in this case, it's obviously failing because it's not having anything. But as soon as I pre-fill everything and I hit add person, this may, there must be an error somewhere. Oh, date of birth. I'm missing the date of birth. <coughs> Did you know that it's a um, There's an error here. What is the error? Oh, I know what's the error. Good thing you know. No, no, it's just that. No, no, let me explain, let me explain. It's just that the schema, no, no, it's not related to the, the, the database. The schema says it should be a date, right? The point is that the, every input returns in strings. So the schema is not matching and there is an error there. Right now, the only thing that we don't we're not showing in this form it are the errors, and that's a mistake because we should see the validation errors, right? Yeah, yeah, we so we should exactly the name is not there. I don't see the error. So we should have something at the end of the what, like a console yeah. So but in React Bootstrap, actually Bootstrap, Bootstrap five, right? In Bootstrap 5, there is a control for form. Yeah, the form controls, it has a way to show errors. Next to the field that you yes. the error to? Like that, yeah. 
Huh. Okay, so. In Bali feedback, perfect. <coughs> In Bali feedback, okay, let's use that. Now, the error for that is inform, form state, errors, and the name of the field. So this field is the name, so name, dot message. Like this. Now, I should not always render this only when we have an error. So I will wrap the whole thing in a condition render. So it will only show that we have an error in the name if we actually have an error in the name. It's not showing that. Yeah, but it should be still showing below. No, no, something missing here. Name. For state errors, yes, 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 yes. Let's do this. Use effect. Give me one second. Let me see what is the actual error. For form state error. So in the console, I should see the errors. OK, the error with the name is name is required. With the phone, phone is required. With the country ID, with the address. There is no error for the DOB. Oh, DOB, expected date, receive a string, you see? Because the input. It's a string. We can fix that. But I'm not seeing the error. Let me see how can we show the error. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> so that means that if we have name, Oh, names required. There, you, there we go. I should see in red. Uh, it should be a text red, right, or something like that. No, <laughs> this is Bootstrap. Uh, how do you put a red text in Bootstrap? Uh, text color. Ah, shit. Oh, great. Text danger. That's all I need. There you go. Thanks for fine. Perfect. So we can copy this. And here is DOB. DOB. And here is email. Email. This is phone, phone, and this is address, address. Okay, I think we have it all. So you see, most of them are. <coughs> so once I prefill, I still have this error. Spend the day, receive stream. Okay, that usually happens when the type of data that you are entering in the input is not a string, right? For example, if you are entering, you're expecting a number, it will be the same error. It, say, it will say, I'm expecting an integer or a number, and I receive it a string. The way React Hook 4 solves that 
is in the input, you can specify an extra option here and set value as date. And you can say true, and that will convert it to a date. OK? So now, when we enter the data, let's say 10, 28, 1977, you see? That went through. Oh, now we have another error. It says, oh, we're expecting a no. Yeah, yeah. It's because I initialize it as no. Yeah, I don't need this. Actually, I don't need this either. Let's do it again. There you go. And that's my full set of data, right? Notice that the date, the D of V, is a date, right? It formatted as a date. The same happens with numbers. You can say value as number, true, and it will convert it to a number automatically. OK, so that's my form. I have all the elements of the form are the hook form with the resolver schema, right? So you have to create the schema. You have to use the use form with all the default values. If you need the default values, use them. If you don't, it's not, it doesn't, it's not important. Uh, you also have, um, by the way, we don't need this anymore. We use the form tag with the unsubmit using form handle submit and the function. This function, you see, this function is the function that gets called when the form is validated, right? It's submitted and validated. And this, fo and this function gets the data. I'm console logging that data. That's why we see it in the console, right? When I click here, and I add, that's what I, that function gets called, and I just console logging that data, right? Now, that function should submit that data to Superbase, okay? And once the data is added to the database, then I can go back to the listing table. Make sense? Yeah. So let's do that. Uh, <coughs> yeah, we have time for that. So to do that in Superbase, we need a function to, instead of getting all the, all the people from Superbase, we need a function to send the data to Superbase, right? And in Superbase, again, we have that in the documentation. So you can go to the table. You can click API docs, inserting rows. And there is an example of that, right? Insert a row. I will copy this. And I will create my service function, create person. Spore function, async function, create person, and the data. And that's, in, that's my function. Now I get the data back and the error. What I get the data back is because I can return the data that was created. And in that data, it comes the ID. So if you want to create it and automatically go to the details page, you can do that, right? Because I'm getting the data back. And in that data that comes back, I have the ID. So I can link it to the details page, right? I will not do that in this one. I will go back to the listing page. But if you want to do that, that's the way we do it, right? So inserting in the people table, notice that data has square brackets here. It's because this function also works when you want to add multiple data at the same time, right? If you want to send one, just send one result, one object. If you want to send multiple objects at the same time, you can put a comma and add more. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> Person. Okay, so now we go to the, we go here, and we can automatically use the function here. So we can do something like this. We can do 
uh, create person with super base. Of course, we need to we need to get the super base client, right? And what is the data? And then once we finish, we can do whatever we want with that created record. What I'm gonna do is console log it so we can see the ID that was created. And once I finish, I can go to the people page. Now using the router to dynamically move that. So I need the router. Okay. By the way, the router is a hook that we use in Next.js for for programmatically make page changes, right? In this case, when the user clicks on the, the submit button, the new data is getting created, right? And then once it's finished, I want to go back to the people page, and that's what I do programmatically here. I don't need a person clicking on the link to go back to the to the people page. I will automatically send them to the people page. Okay? Now this works. Hey. Sorry, it should be this. Right? So this will work. Should work. Let's see if that uh have an error. Oh, I see. Okay, okay, yeah. It should not be called data here, it should be person data. Okay, so let's create a new person. Oh, I will create myself, I guess. And I will send that information to the back. And if fail. It's public, so I should not have any problem. Oh, I need the country ID. Oh. I need the country ID. Yeah, it's required. Yeah, on the table it's required. Yeah, I will try to, let's see. It was not required, it's this. It had an <laughs> some value that if you don't pass it, then it will automatically generate, but that's wrong. Okay, now it should work. Because I'm not passing anything, it should be empty, so it's fine. Okay, let's do it again. Add person, myself, 1028, 77. Oh, perfect, that worked. Of course, it's failing because for that last person, I didn't add a name, a country, so now it's failing on the country. So let me fix the listing page. So the listing page has an error. It's because I assuming that person has a country. Right? It doesn't have a country. That question mark that I put there means if we don't have a countries, don't search for the name, right? Just leave it there, don't put anything. So you see, I'm there. Now, I don't have a country, I don't have a picture, so things that I need to add. So let me go back and remove that, remove that record and add it again. Okay, so let's go back and try to add it again, but this time selecting a country, okay? Now, before I move on to the country part, any questions? No? Now, two things. <laughs> two things. One is the way we send the data 
to the back end works okay it's fine it works the only problem is that we are not managing the state of that request remember we use react query to manage the state of the queries we manage to get all the data from the backend but we can also use react query to manage the data that we are sending to the backend right because for example this button over here this button over here it says add person but what happens when you are sending the data this button should be disabled should have like a status saying it's loading or you're sending the data right i'm not ha i don't have that i don't have that state so technically the way we should solve this is by using a query a people query but this time, instead of using use query, we're going to use use mutation. And use mutation also have two properties. One is mutation function and mutation key. I only want to pass mutation function. <coughs> Sorry. And in the mutation function, I will call the data. I will call create person superbase comma data. Okay. Now the mutation is kind of simpler because we only need that mutation function. And the mutation functions, if you remember the index. The, the query function is an arrow that a uh, function that doesn't take any parameter and it just returns the data. In the mutation hook, that mutation function takes a set of data and it just do something with the data. I don't care what you're doing, right? In this case, I'm going to use create person and I will call uh, superbase and data. So I'm calling this function with the superbase client and the data that I'm passing or creating, and that should do the trick. So now, let me move this up. And now, instead of calling this function directly, I will call the mutation. So, people query dot mutate async with the data. Actually, same way. Okay, but now notice that I just added the the hook, the mutation hook. Instead of calling the function directly to create the record, I'm calling through the mutation hook, and that mutation hook will give me a bunch of other state to, for example, say people query dot is pending then saving data otherwise add person so I can change the button logic uh, wait not this Disable if it's people query is pending, etc. etc. Okay, so now when I submit the data, I will see a saving status showing up then at the bottom, right? You see, and the button is disabled during that push. And it, everything happens the same way. It will console load the re re record, and it will send it back to router, right? It's just that now I have a status of how that query is, is performing, right? So I can show in the UI what's happening. Questions so far? And that's the record. You were recording this after the break. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I started recording. <laughs> I know it was. Yes. Short that, like 
if, if when you're sending it to, to uh, the Superbase or whatever database you're sending it to, if there's like kind of like a, a something queued up the backlog, it will it will slow the it will be slower, right? Okay. And the UI will at least tell the user this is happening. This is waiting. In. This is something that uh, commonly happens. That's why yeah, yeah, yeah. That's you. All, you have to do it always. That's why React Query is important. It's because if you have like if you have an app that really works well in your laptop, right. you don't have much data there, you know. exactly. It's fine because it's like a it's like a lab. It's like an experiment. But when you put that app in the wild and you have people using your app in your phone with low coverage, mm -hmm. then at least they will see the spinning button that something is happening in your app, right? So you need that status handle. Now let's do two more things before we, we let go. So the first one is the country, right? We need to be able to show the country. Now for the country, we need to get the list of countries first, right? So the first thing that we're going to do here is to create the same way we did get people. Let's do get countries. And this is so similar that I won't even create a new file for it. Right? Same, same thing. Just a function that gives me the list of countries from Superbase. Okay? I'm getting from the countries table. I'm getting all the, all the fields, and I'm returning that. Now, in my code, in the create page, I have to create a selector here. Well, first a label for the country, and then a selector for the country ID. Okay. Now the options for this con for this selector, if I leave the selector right like this with no uh, no other options, this is what I'm gonna see. Just a selector with nothing in it, right? But I need the options. And these options should come from Superbase. So what I need to query Superbase, we already know how to query Superbase. We use React Query, right? And we do countries query use query 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 key is countries and the query function get countries super so now I'm getting all the countries. Oh, countries. Well, this is a key. That will that will not matter much, but yeah, you got it. Okay, so now I'm getting all the countries. I have to use it to create my options. So I go to the selector and I map the countries query the data the map. And each one of these is an option ID country dot ID value is actually country wait no this is the key and this is the value country dot ID and inside I would use country dot name so now I have <coughs> it seems I'm not getting any country. Oh, actually, it's four countries. Uh, what happened? No, no, it, the select. 
option. Oh, wait. Oh. I was not returning it. That's the was the issue. I put curly brackets. When you put parentheses, remember in an arrow function. So now, now it should be there. <coughs> okay, that comes from the database. So whatever. So if I, if I select Mexico or over Cuba, and I put my information again, 10-28-1977, and I save at person. Now I'm from Cuba, right? The thing with the error was that. Remember in in JavaScript, if you do this on an arrow function, right? So let's say five. Whenever you call this arrow function, what will be the result? What will be? Five. It will be five. But if you do like this, it will be on the five because. This is just an instruction, but I'm not returning anything, right? Parenthesis means whatever is inside, return that. Curly brackets means whatever is inside, execute that, right? And phi is nothing. It should be return phi if you have curly brackets. So that was the error that I had before. Now you see I have the country, OK? Um, and we are missing one, the picture. I think we have time for the picture, yes. Question before I move on to the... Question? Uh, oh yeah. uh, go ahead, go ahead. No, I don't have any questions. Okay. Uh, oh, I see. How, oh, oh, how, oh, oh. phone control. And this is phone label. Okay, so now this is this is for a foreign key, right? I need we need to query all the possible options, and we have to render those possible options in a way that the select the value. Remember, in a select, this value is whatever whatever we select. That's the value that we are choosing, right? That's why we can make that connection. Now for the for the picture. Uh, the picture is a little bit different, and in the sense that we require a little bit more, but I created for you this super base or this image input, and I will share this code with you. This image input, this image input is essentially a component already made that allow you to specify the bucket, in this case is the pictures bucket, the value and the on change. Similar to a regular input, right? Now, if we want to use this component with React Hook 4, we need to use something called a controller. And in the controller, we need to pass the form control, and we need to pass the name. In this case, the name is picture. And we need to pass a render function. So this is all in the documentation, how to use a custom-made input. That's why we need to use all these controller nonsense. It's because image input is a custom made input. It's not a native input from HTML. It's not an input. It's not a select. It's not a, you know, it's something that we had to make, right? And because we had to make it, then we need to create and use it. Uh, something is missing here. Oh. So this is the input. So now we have this. 
and let me see if I can wrap it in a in a diff okay so now I can enter all my information 10, 28, 77 I will put here Cuba Ah, same thing. Um, let me see if I have a picture. Uh, <coughs> Sorry. Oh, I know. I have one here. Storage. No, I have one here. I can use uh, this one. Okay, it should be on downloads, right? So I can go to the form. And actually, I can drag and drop it there. So downloads. Here we are. Right? That's the input. And I can add the person. And there you go. Okay? So that's a particular input that I created to be able to upload images. Now, how that image is stored in Superbase? The image, the name is strip. So the name is no longer the same. And it's just a random name. So for every person that you upload with an image, you see that the picture is just a random number, right? Mm -hmm. And using that random number, you will find it in the storage. So in the storage, in the pictures bucket, somewhere here, <laughs> it's different. Okay. okay, so that's the picture that we loaded for this user. Got it? Okay, and that's a that's an input that basically works that that way. So basically, takes whatever whatever file do you have, and that's the file that we will show. And every time you change the file, like if I, how can I try that? Okay, every time I select a file, the problem is that sometimes the browser, let me make it public. So most of you have, most of you have Slack, right? Okay, so go to Slack and try to upload something there. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's public now, so you can go there and just upload your own data. Any, don't put your real data, just put some made up data. And well, put an image, right? Just want to show that the image part works. Or an image, right? Yeah. That's that's what it is. Now you can even control what type of image is or what type of file you want to load. It should be images, it could be PDF, whatever you decide. That's on the on the file documentation. But yeah, if you have it there, let me know. <coughs> Sorry. Yes. It should be automatic, by the way. Yeah, in my case, for 
para que seleccionara, seleccione un ID directamente y se vaya. Si 